In this video, I'm going to show you the difference between automation, AI workflow, and AI agent with real examples. Three advanced AI tips to eliminate your manual work. Let me share with you how you can use that for finance. And I'm doing this based on this definition. I found this from Alex Contias from 9X, who had the best definition of the difference between automation, AI workflow, and AI agent. So when you think about automation, automation is basically something that is rule-based. If something is happening, then something else is going to happen. For example, if you find a sales in USA, then you apply a certain sales tax. That's rule-based. Then you have AI workflow. AI workflow is what we started to do like two years ago when ChatGPT arrived, where we have our normal process, but at one point in the process, we are going to feed information into AI and collect information back. That could be, for example, that you are writing a letter to your client who didn't pay since a while and instead of writing yourself you just ask AI to write the letter for you and then you get the letter back so that's including AI in your workflow and then we have the third part the AI agent so AI agent here is really important to understand that the key point here is autonomy you basically give a general task to the AI agent let's say it could be recover the money and then this agent will not only send a personalized email, it will use other means like calling or like asking other people in the company to help or even like stop the sales order to make sure the client react. So it will use a lot of different tools, a lot of different tasks, which are not programmed at the beginning of the task, but programmed by the AI to achieve to the goal of the general task. We are going to see in this video that it's not really easy to have autonomous agent. Now we have seen the definitions. Let's go directly to see an example of automation, but also how AI can help you automate. So here I am in Google Sheets and I have a big problem is that I have credit card statements which are really messy. So imagine a tab per credit card statement and in this tab, the data is just messy. And what I want is I want to consolidate all of this data to have only one data, but also a clean data. So what I do is I'm going to select the first five lines and then I'm going to paste that in ChatGPT because when I paste it, it knows what I'm talking about. I don't need to upload the data. And then I explain what I do normally with this data. So I consolidate. So I want to consolidate all tabs. I want to keep only column C to E. Then I also want to delete some of the lines because we saw that we don't need all of the lines. You see, like I will talk with somebody in my team here, I'm describing what I want to do, what I usually do manually. I'm giving that into ChatGPT with a prompt so here, for example, I want to keep the company name and also to have this company name in a separate column. I also want to have the same for card holder name. And now really important, I'm asking ChatGPT help to automate this. And how? Maybe you don't know it, but you can do it with Google Script. So here is Google Script. Even if you don't know how to use Google Script, what do you do? You are going to ask ChatGPT to help you to show you how to use it inside your Google Sheet. Then ChatGPT shows you how to do it. I never used Google Script before. I just here tried this task, this script, and let's see what is going to happen. So I'm just renaming this script like this. I can also reuse it in the future. And that's the best part. You can reuse it in the future. You can run that. And I know some of you will watch and say, oh, I'm not using Google Sheet. I'm using Office. Well, you have also now Office with needs to be online. And if not, you use VBA. And see what is happening now. We have this new tab, consolidated tab, which is done automatically for you, consolidating all of the tabs one after the other. So something you will have done manually now, you can see that it's done step after step by here, our script. Magic, right? You could see that AI wrote this script for us and will save us a lot of time every month. So it's not AI doing the data clean for you, it's AI writing the script and this script is stable. Like this, you have an automation. So if, then that. And that's how you can use AI to automate and to make data cleaning with script. And try it really either in Google script, either in Office script, if you are, use Office Online or VBA for Excel or even Python script. Let's move now to AI workflow. So what could be an AI workflow? Let's do, for example, an expense categorizer 
Jupyter GPT. We saw before that we have now our credit card statement, but I still need to categorize them. So what I will do is I will go and I will create a GPT. A GPT is a tailored version of ChatGPT, which will respect the instructions that you give. So now I am in the GPT builder and I am explaining that I want to build an expense categorizer. So I give my categories. So what type of expense categories I have and what is my logic. And then the GPT builder understand that I want to build an expense categorizer and is slowly building the GPT for us. And now we see we have already the GPT done. We are going to give this GPT a nice name because like all babies, you need to give another identity. You need to give a logo. So here you can also create a logo for this GPT. Yeah, here, credit card with a dollar on it. Then we're going to name it expense categorizer. So now it's finished. So now I'm going to publish it and let's take our data. We will now prompt this expense categorizer to categorize for us the data. So really important because you might ask, oh, I cannot upload my data in ChatGPT because my company doesn't authorize that. Well, in my case, I am using ChatGPT Teams. ChatGPT Teams is covered by SOC 2 standard. So here I can upload my data with Google Drive. And you can see here, for me, it's okay. ChatGPT is not using my data, is not training my data. But for you, you need to check because only ChatGPT teams and enterprise offer this SOC 2 type of control and standards. So pay attention to see if it fits your company. We see that the GPT understand what is to do. Now we have some categorization of our transactions. We can see the category on the right side, which is really quite good because imagine if you have to go through all of these transactions and categorize yourself, this will take you a lot of time. But something I'm not happy, there are too many others. So what I'm going to do is ask for a second round to reduce the number of others that we could have. So now I say, okay, review only the others and make sure to review to see if we can add other categories. Okay, now you can see that we have almost all lines categorized and we have only a few others, which is much better than before. So this was how to use a GPT to categorize. And I can tell you, I know a lot of business who spends a lot of time on this, but here we see that we have already categorized a lot of the transactions. Now let's go to the next step to create an agent or an AI workflow. I want to here be specific that we are creating the base for an agent, but it's not a full autonomous agent. That's why like we are between the AI workflow and the AI agent. And we are going to do that in a tool called N8N. So in this tool here, my friend Tobias Swingman did that for the AI finance club. He created this categorizer for us. And Tobias was teaching that also during a masterclass. So here we have access to the Google sheet we were using before with categories and with the transactions. So that's what you see here. And we are going to pull this data and to merge it and to put it inside OpenAI with a specific prompt that Tobias built. And you can see here, that's where all of the genius of a good prompt is going to create value. Because we are asking to categorize and then to give also a specific location based on the description. So the task is really clear. And then the output is going to be a list with all of the categories. And finally, we are going to save that in a specific Google Sheet. Here in the output will be categorized. So I launch the workflow. You can see we pull the data and then we send it in OpenAI with the prompt. And here I'm using the API of OpenAI, which again is covered by SOC2 standard. So my company is okay with this. After that, the input on the left is processed with the prompt, we have the output on the right. And line by line, we have all of the categories but let's see here in Google Sheet, we have all of our transactions categorized, but on top on the column G, we have the location. Imagine the time you will need to do that if you have to read all of the line and to categorize yourself. You can ask a lot of accountants. This is hours and hours of work saved. Of course, here it's not going to be super perfect. It's not going to be 100% accurate because it's only reading the description. So a bit like you will have an intern doing the work where maybe 80% is good and 20% might need to be changed, you need to review. But the way you, that you review is you look first at the biggest positions because those are important, especially if they are wrongly classified. And then maybe you will need to improve a bit the prompt. Maybe you need to give a bit more examples like you are doing in a coaching with somebody. But you see the base is really good because it's going to save you 80% of the work. So this is something we are teaching in the AI Finance Club. If you are interested, I have the link below in the comments. We are already more than 300 members join us 
because we are teaching how to build that. We are also giving the templates. Here, Topias Swingman was doing that with us. It's an expert. So I invite a lot of experts in the AI Finance Club. If you want to become an AI CFO, I recommend to join us. If you want to learn all of these super practical workflows, automation, and building with us also how to make agents for finance. I hope you enjoyed that. Check my other videos and I see you in the next one.